What's up everyone, welcome back to another video. So today we're out in my garden because it is near the end of summer and a bunch of stuff is getting ripe and it's time to pick a bunch of things and I thought it'd be fun to bring you guys along while I harvest some stuff from our garden but also to talk about like what worked this year in our garden, what didn't work, like kind of what we learned and just share some of our experience with all of you because I know a lot of you like gardening and you're new to gardening out there and every single year we seem to like learn a bunch of new things about gardening and about our garden. So I thought it'd be cool to like share some of that info with you guys. So just to put it out there right at the start, I am not claiming that I am some professional gardener or anything. I am just stumbling through this and learning as I go, as I mentioned. Uh, so every year I learn a little bit something different. That's what I'm gonna be sharing with you today. Some things that I learned this year, like where I messed up, where I succeeded. And if you guys have any things that you learned this year that helped you out or stuff that didn't work, definitely leave it in the comment section down below so that we can like all learn and read each other's successes and like failures because it's always interesting and there's always a few in the garden, no matter if you're just growing something in like a couple pots or you have a few garden beds or like a whole farm. There's definitely trials and tribulations to all of them. So starting off with what worked in this garden back here was putting down some mulch. And we've always struggled with these two garden beds back here being super hot because the sun kind of comes across like this so it gets the afternoon and the evening sun and then with the like bright white uh, wall behind us here the sun just like reflects off it and just absolutely cooks this soil. So uh, we had a problem with it drying out. So what we did was we put down some mulch and uh, what we used for mulch was just like some hay. And uh, that's one of the best types of mulch. You can use uh, like, you could use grass clippings. You can use, um, like leaves as well, but they have to be in like a certain state of decay. So definitely do a little bit of research on that. But what we did was we just kind of spread it all over the ground. And what that does is it protects it from the blaring sun, first of all, so it doesn't like cook the top of the soil. Cause what we found was that when the soil would be super dry like that, we would try and water it and the water would just like all run off to the side and it wouldn't actually like, you know, penetrate into the soil. So this has helped so, so much. Uh, and it keeps the soil a lot healthier, cooler. You don't have to water the plants as much, which has been amazing. So mulch, the best thing that I learned this year was like putting down mulch 100%. I'm going to do it for the rest of my life. Every garden bed, every pot that I grow, like, you know, lettuce or kale or whatever, and I'm going to do that. So mulch. So because it's so hot back here, the tomatoes work really well. They absolutely love the heat. And as you can see, like they've grown like crazy. They're all over the place. And uh, so one thing that I learned this year was that you've got to stock up on these. Oh my gosh, I just touched the spider web. You got to stock up on these like uh, tomato baskets early in the year because we only got a few of them. And then by the time everything was like out of control and we went to try and get them, um, they were like all sold out. So then I had to like rig up like all this stuff. You can see here with like, there's so much tension. Like you can play like the uh, guitar. It's like bass. <laughs> Slap it to base. <laughs> and this uh, is a little bit of cat's cradle if you guys remember that game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then peas also work really well back here. Peas seem to grow really well anywhere. You just need somewhere where they can like grow up. Uh, they kind of, peas have like a sort of, they're one of the first things to that you can like harvest. So they have like a, you know, they, they tend to die off earlier in the year, but for some reason ours had like a resurgence and they're coming back. So yeah, I don't think they're quite ripe yet, but like, let's see what we're working with here. Yeah, look at that. That's awesome. Here, let me break into it. <laughs> look at that. That's so funny. Yeah, we've got like a bunch of tomatoes that I have to pick. So I'm going to grab a few of those, but there's a couple of really like special ones that I'm going to show you guys. So just give me a second. So this is the interesting one. Let me just cut it off here. Check out this tomato. What a freaky looking tomato this is. It's gnarly, eh? Like, where's the top? Where's the bottom? Like, look at that. It's got, like, the green stuff coming out of here, 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 all around. So, what this is, they call it, like, cat face tomato. And I don't really know why they call it that, because a cat is, like, beautiful in this tomato. Well, uh, what happens is a bunch of flowers kind of, like, form together. It's like a genetic mutation. And it'll there'll be, like, a bunch of flowers in this kind of, like, ball of flowers. And... Uh, a lot of people, what they do is they'll cut them off because they're like mutated like this, but I don't know. I thought it'd be fun to 
to let it grow and see what it gets. So I'd like to like cut it right down the middle and mm -hmm. see what it looks like. Hey, mm -hmm. maybe I'll like overlay that footage or we'll, um, we'll add it in at the end. Cause I like, what do you think that would look like cut right in half? It'd be pretty <laughs> crazy. Know. Anyways, let me uh, just grab a couple more and then we'll move on. Wow. This is probably my biggest tomato I've ever grown. Look at this. Yeah, wow. that is definitely the biggest tomato I've ever grown. That's a beauty. They cut that one off by accident. Look, another uh, cat-faced one. And it's even got some, like, yeah, this one's like super ripe and these aren't ripe enough. So I probably shouldn't have cut it, but I could only see this, so I thought it was ripe. So check that out, not a bad haul. So while we're talking about tomatoes, I should mention the flower marigold. So marigolds are supposed to uh, keep certain insects away that tend to like, you know, bug, infect, whatever, um, tomato plants. So the cool thing about marigolds is that the petals here are edible. And that is another thing that kind of has worked this year. Something that I enjoyed was like actually growing flowers that have edible petals. So you can put these on top of uh, like smoothie bowls to make it really pretty, or you can put them on top of like salads and they don't taste too bad. This end of it is a little bit bitter. So some people cut those off, but I don't mind them at all. And they're a good source of like nutrients, just like, you know, I don't know any other like plant food, like they're a good source of beta carotene, some vitamin C in there. And, yeah, and they don't taste bad. I'm like, you're eating flowers. Like, how cool is that? <laughs> okay, yeah, so something that didn't work was the lettuce in this garden here. And you can see it's bolted. And what this means is just that it's going to seed and it puts all its energy into growing really, really tall. And then it goes to flower and seed at the top. And the idea is that it would like, drop its seeds and then they'll spread and, you know, it'll continue to, to grow further. Uh, so yeah, we didn't get to eat all this, unfortunately. When it bolts, it tends to happen really quickly here. So what happens is the lettuce leaves become really high in latex. It's a natural latex and you can see it coming out there and uh, it's really, really bitter, hard to digest on your, you know, on your gut and everything. Uh, so I generally don't eat the greens when they get to this point. Yeah, they're super bitter and yeah, they're not, not so good like that. What we'll do is eventually we'll like pull these out and maybe we'll plant something else uh, like some more lettuce before, you know, it gets too cold in the fall. So another thing that we have back here in this garden, well, in this far corner here, we have um, like purple tomatoes. They're really cool. Um, they're super high in anthocyanins, which is a purple blue pigment. Uh, it's a very strong antioxidant. So that's really cool. Uh, they're not quite ripe yet, but when they are, they're absolutely delicious. A few other things that uh, is cool in this garden is this green right here is one of my favorite greens and it grows like crazy back here. And a few years ago, I, I um, found one that was going to seed and I got the seeds from it from the side of the ocean, held onto them and then planted them. And this is the plant here. So I think that's pretty awesome. And it absolutely loves this location. So I'll be growing more here for sure. Uh, we do have some cucumbers here as well. And I, I grew them at the back with the idea that um, I would put this lattice up behind here that they could grow on. And I did that and it's worked out really well. So Crystal's giving you the, the money shot right there, the lattice, but you can see here. So, oh, look at that. Okay, here, perfect. So what we've caught oh, yeah. is, oh, wow. if any of you guys, I wonder if you guys know what this is. Well, I have to tell you, but it's a lemon cucumber it's called. So usually they're a bit more bright yellow than this. We have some other ones actually. I'll show you this one here. Yeah. So usually they're a bit more yellow, kind of like this one when they hit the sun. But uh, yeah, the idea was that they would, you know, the, the vines would have lots of place to, lots of place to grow here and spread out and then they'd uh, be able to throw off their little cucumbers. So yeah, let's try this one out. So good. <laughs> You want a bite, Crystal? Crystal's behind the camera. Thank you for filming. Welcome. Mm. They don't taste really like anything like lemon, not that I can pick out anyway, so don't think like, it's it's just like a cucumber. Don't think you're missing out too much, but they are really fun to eat and really tasty. The nice thing about them is the skin is so, so thin, you hardly even notice that. So these are really fun. Ooh. Oh wow, look at that. Because up here, you know, frosty Canada. We have pretty <laughs> short growing seasons. That's true. Um, so you want to make sure that uh, the things that you grow, you know, they, they tend to ripen pretty quickly. And these are called pickling cucumbers and they've been, um, I guess, hybridized, you know, selectively bred uh, to be very small. So this is the size that they're supposed to be. And they're absolutely delicious. They probably <laughs> taste a lot like this, so I won't take a bite out of this. We'll save this one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, pretty awesome. All right, so just while we're heading to the other garden, 
we're gonna stop here at this hanging basket uh, because this has been a big success this year. It looks a little sad right now. We've had some really hot days. Like it's been really hot for here the last few days and um, I kind of forgot to water this for a couple days. So it got a little wilty, especially this lettuce here. But uh, this has been so amazing. And uh, we found this at the end of the road actually earlier in the summer and I called Crystal and sent her a picture and I was like, hey Crystal, do we want this? Like, what's up? Because I always tend to like bring too much junk into the house. So I had to ask her first, but she was like, yo, that looks awesome. Uh, so I actually like refinished it and everything. And this is what it looks like because you can't really see it through all the plants. Um, but yeah, you just put the soil in there and um, there's like a, a pipe that goes in the middle that has some holes in it. So when you water it, it kind of like, uh, like percolates out into the soil, if that's the right word. But anyways, it's been really fun and stuff absolutely loves growing in here. And the best part is the slugs can't get to it and like bugs hardly seem to bother it at all just because it's hanging, it's off the ground. Um, so the lettuce was absolutely perfect up until when, you know, I killed it and stopped watering. But uh, so I think I'm gonna make a few of these this year and I'm definitely, or sorry, next year, I'm gonna make a few of these and I'm definitely gonna do a tutorial on how to make them because it's really simple. Like you only need some really simple tools. It's just a few pieces of wood, it's the holes in it, some dirt, and yeah, you could hang this on like your balcony if you live in an apartment or whatever. And we already have a few gardens, but I mean, I'd hang these like all the way across here. If I could, we could have so <laughs> many herbs, even though we didn't eat them all. But what we've got in here is some parsley, some mint, uh, lettuce. There's some cilantro. It didn't seem to grow as well. Some basil up here as well. And uh, basil's tough. I never seem to do very well with basil. So if you guys have any tips on how to grow basil or basil better, I never know how to say it. Uh, and definitely leave it in the comments down below. But yeah, this has been amazing. Absolutely loved it. One thing we did learn about this, <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm gonna say. Yeah. The chocolate mint, holy crap, it grows like crazy. So that's this right here. We planted it on this side. Look at this. This, this <laughs> is all chocolate mint growing out, like all of these. And I've pulled them out and everything and I'm like, stop growing, but it just keeps growing. So yeah, chocolate mint, uh, probably in a planter or pot on its own because it's like super invasive. Anyways, let's go over here. <laughs> this is the last garden, but also the first garden we made when we moved in here, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, so this is a rental that we live in right now. I don't know if you guys care if it matters at all, but just so you know, like we built all these garden beds. I went to the landlord and I was like, hey man, I want to grow some of our own like food. If I make like a really clean garden bed and it looks really nice and professional, uh, is that cool? And he was like, yeah, sure. So then, you know, every year I kind of ask him the same thing. Can I build another garden bed, another one? This one seems to grow the best greens. And uh, we've, we've come to realize that this year 100% we kind of figured it last year but we know now those gardens are too hot over there this one has been awesome and not only that um, but we also keep it covered too with this bug netting and uh, the reason why is because we get cabbage moths here like crazy and cabbage moths will land on any um, cruciferous vegetable and they land and they lay their little eggs underneath and they just like decimate your kale, yeah, broccoli, and even this as well, but you can see. So that's what these holes are from. I wonder if we can see any of the little buggers on the back here. No, I don't, I don't see any, a couple little aphids though. So it's been amazing for the kale. The lettuce seemed to absolutely love it in here. We've harvested a lot or like cut down a lot of the stuff that was in here already because it is fairly late in the season, but I think we will be planting, oh, I'll show you this stuff in the garden. Uh, so we have some spinach and some arugula. Uh, we absolutely love arugula around here and yeah, spinach is always good too. So uh, we're gonna plant this for a late fall harvest. We'll see how that does. Made some notes so I wanna make sure I didn't forget anything valuable that I learned to share with you guys. <laughs> Oh yes, okay. So what we did with this garden bed was at the beginning of the year, and I'll see if I can um, dig up some of the footage from that, but we actually added some seaweed to the, um, to like an inch or two down in the garden bed because we knew we were gonna be adding some new topsoil this year. So we thought add some extra minerals to the ground and we went to, to the ocean as we live right by it and we actually like got a whole bunch of fresh seaweed. So seaweed you can actually do that with, you can put it right in. Um, you shouldn't do it with like vegetable scraps and stuff like that but because seaweed has such a little cellulose, um, it breaks down really quickly and because it's so rich in minerals and things like iodine, um, it is absolutely amazing at helping the, the you know, um, give nutrients to the soil. We have to go back to the tomatoes. I have to show them the diddling of the Baby, tomatoes. Baby, forgot to tell them about diddling? Yep, yep, yep. okay. Where is a good tomato flower? Okay, here we go. So something really cool to know about tomatoes is that the flowers have both male and female parts in them. 
Yes, the pretty freaky flowers. <laughs> so, uh, but the cool thing about that is that they are, uh, they can be self-pollinating, but they do need a little bit of help. So rather than a, um, you know, a bug having to go to like a different flower or a different plant and then come to this one to pollinate it, it all you have to do is agitate the flower and then it's pollinated like that. So I say, I call it diddling the tomato flowers. Uh, some people will actually use like a, um, what's it called? Electric. An electric, yeah, an electric toothbrush, whatever, you know, works. But doing this it will agitate the flower so that it will pollinate it and then you will get more, uh, you will get more flowers turning into tomatoes like this. So look at that, you, it, it basically increases your rates from something like 60 to 70% up to like 95% germination. So you definitely wanna do that. So to remember to diddle your tomatoes. That was one of the most important things I wanted to tell you guys. <laughs> so I did try and grow a Savoy cabbage this year. That was new for me. And this has been growing for like, I don't know, like a month or like a month and a half. And like, look at the size of it. Like this is all, it, half the leaves are dead. But that's all that the Savoy cabbage is. And this thing costs, like, look at the price. Oh Hold on, goodness. look. It was $4. It's like, it's like a buck 50 or like two bucks to buy a Savoy cabbage at the store. That's so funny. Oh well. <laughs> but it's the fun, it's the joy, it's the satisfaction of growing your own food. So yeah, we've got uh, purple kale in here and green kale. Those both did really, really well. We love those. Um, the purple kale seems to attract less of those green caterpillars. And I think it's because they're not as well camouflaged on here. But just something to note, if you don't have the luxury of um, having the row covering, or the insect covering over top. Uh, but I think that's about it. Let me see. Hold on, if I missed anything. Yeah. Oh, uh, another thing is that we grew some things too close together and oh, yeah. we didn't thin things out. So when we like planted a few seeds and there'd be like three or four little um, shoots of like lettuce coming up, rather than thinning them out to just one, we left all four and then they would crowd uh, and then you wouldn't get like a nice big head of lettuce. You'd just kind of get all these like kind of straggly, like, you know, one quarter lettuce heads. So I don't know, it worked out okay. We still got lots of lettuce from it, but it definitely, you don't get those like nice big heads of lettuce that you get from the store. So that's another one. Yeah, that was my bad. Yeah, the, I know. I, I couldn't, I couldn't kill them. I just wanted <laughs> yeah. them all to grow. I know, Chris, I told Crystal cause she was kind of in charge of that part of the garden. And I was like, Crystal, you gotta like, kill the weak ones and leave the strong ones if she felt too bad so we just screw them all <laughs> that, that vegan life eh? yeah. oh sunflower so we i grew sunflowers this year is the first time and actually the reason why i grew sunflowers is right here because uh we got a bird feeder this year and the birds decided that they don't like the seed inside the bird feeder they like to shoot it out onto the ground uh so we ended up having all this all over the ground <laughs> <laughs> it all went in my mouth. So what happened was some of the sunflowers, they started to sprout and I was like, hey, wouldn't that be cool if I just like grew them into, you know, like actual sunflowers. So planted them in a planter and what do you know? <laughs> Lost my phone. <laughs> we got some sunflowers, look at that. It's like the size of my head. So these were really fun to grow this year. I actually was surprised at how cool they were to grow and how much I just kind of like enjoyed coming out every day and seeing, you know, how much more they're leaning. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> how much more they're um, growing. So what's really neat, like I'm sure a lot of you knew this, but when I took a poll on my Instagram stories, nearly half the people didn't know that this is where sunflower seeds like come from or like, I mean, I'm sure they knew they come from sunflowers, but they didn't know that it was kind of like this simple. Like, look at that. Those are all sunflowers right there. Wow. Yeah, but I think it's just so cool. It's so beautiful. And if you guys know anything about the Fibonacci sequence and life shapes and geometry and stuff like that, you'll know that like, this is like king of the Fibonacci. Look at that, it's so beautiful. Heck yeah. All right, let's go to the front and get some peaches. So this is new. We actually put these lights up recently, which is really cool. And the best part is, check this out. I can actually like hang on them. Babe. No, I'm just kidding. I can't. I can't. No, but I love the vibes it gives. Like, can you see them on camera? Like how chill is you that? You can kind of, if it is a little bit darker, you can see them. You can kind of see them right ah. now, but no, it's good vibes. Good. Okay, we're not going to talk about this. We're just going to keep moving. 
It's a little broken. Oh, there's a little midnight. Come on. Come on, come on, midnight. <laughs> so this is not our cat, unfortunately. It's the people that live upstairs. Midnight. <laughs> You know what else worked this year is this rosemary bush. <laughs> Look at the size of this thing. Anytime we want rosemary potatoes, we've got it. It's like once a year, hey, that we use this. <laughs> We're in the front yard now, and here's the peach tree. So this is pretty rad. Uh, it's actually really like rare on Vancouver Island to have a peach tree. It's like, no, I don't think it's like the right growing conditions, but because it's like, uh, we're kind of, south-ish facing here and it's against a wall, it seems to work. I know last year it totally died off and half the tree like died. Oh yeah, this one. Whew. All right, so it doesn't grow the largest peaches, but. Mm. But there are peaches <laughs> and they're really good too. They're super sweet and really juicy. Man, peaches are one of my absolute favorites. Peaches, mm -hmm. raspberries, those are my faves. You want a little peach midnight? I don't think midnight likes peaches. Oh, very good. <laughs> <laughs> no, not even food. Like, isn't that so funny? Yeah. Not even food. Doesn't even register as food. Do you want a bite? Mm. Got to keep the cameraman fed. Yeah. Camera woman. Oh. Pardon me. Rude. Twenty first century here. You can't see the lights at all. Like it doesn't look chill. <laughs> Babe, it looks chill. It's <laughs> oh, just. Man. Okay, so I think that's probably it for this video. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it was a little bit different for this channel. I know I'm usually doing like recipes or full day of eatings or whatever, but I know a bunch of you are interested in gardening and you have gardens yourself and you, you know, you're always asking questions about my garden. So I thought before the end of the summer and before we harvested everything and before everything is like dried up to a crisp, I would come out here and show you guys what's up and just take you around the garden bed. So I hope you enjoyed it. Leave your comments in the comment section down below. If you had anything that like helped you out with gardening, this year you learned anything definitely share it so we can all learn subscribe so you can see more from me i'll see you guys soon with another video I've got some great ideas coming up but if you have any ideas on videos you want to see me do leave them in the comment section as well subscribe so you can see more i'll see you guys soon i'm gonna go and eat all this actually no i'm probably not i'm gonna eat it soon enough but not right now i'll see you guys soon with another video though <laughs> much love yeet <laughs>